Hello, I'm Jansha from WHSS Pirangot. I have seen Professor Lewin's demo of electric field, but is there any method for better visualization of this so that it can be used for scientific calculations? Wow! Thank you, Jansha, for that wonderful question. The same question was asked with the same concern almost 200 years back. At that time, it was answered by the iconic physics teacher Michael Faraday and his ideas are still in use. We are going to study those ideas today. I am Jason, a physics teacher. You are watching me on my YouTube channel LexNova. And I am sure after watching this video today, you will tell your friends about LexNova because you watch any other channel. No other channel explains these ideas as easy as we explain it. It's very easy to follow, send them sure classes. Go ahead, watch till the end. We are going to visualize electric field the Faraday's way. According to him, electric field contains electric field lines and he has certain rules for drawing them. Roughly there are four rules. Rule number one, an electric field line must start at the positive charge and end at the negative charge. It can be straight or curved. So two ideas there. You have to start at the positive charge and end at the negative charge. And the second is it can be a straight line or a curved line. We will draw certain actual lines, uh, then you can understand it better. Now the second rule is electric field line. See, imagine a field line like this. You imagine a point here. If you want to find the direction of the electric field at this point, what you have to do is draw a tangent there. So, this is the second idea. The tangent at any point on an electric field line gives the direction of the electric field line at that point. Now, to the third property. Suppose at this space where one electric field line already drawn, I am drawing a second line. You can draw that way, no problem. The second line is drawn this way. This is a point of intersection. Now the question is, will there be such points where electric fields are or field lines are intersecting? According to this field line, this is the direction of the electric field. And as that point is on this line also, I can draw a direction like this. Now, which one is the actual direction? The answer is you cannot have a situation like this because at one point the electric field has a unique direction. It cannot have more than one direction. That means electric field lines will never Understanding the fourth property, imagine a space. See this space. This space has an electric field E is equal to say 10 Newton per Coulomb. And uh, I am drawing electric field lines here. Say I have drawn two lines here. Okay. And now I have a second space second space, there the electric field intensity is say 20 Newton per Coulomb. How I can draw electric field lines here? Now having drawn two lines here, which is 10 Newton per Coulomb, I have to draw four lines here because the intensity is doubled. So it is, now it is equivalent to 10. I have to draw few more, not few more, two more. Now the thing is, you, what you have to understand is, as electric field intensity doubled, the number of electric field lines also will double. Now here I can see I have drawn two lines. I could have drawn 10 lines, no problem. Then I will have to draw 20 lines here. That is the basic idea. And here the electric field strength is uniform throughout, means the magnitude and direction is the same. If such a field exists, 
the electric field lines will be equally spaced in the same direction. So, equally spaced electric field lines in the same direction indicates uniform electric field. That is the fourth property. Now, for understanding this visualization better, we will draw few electric field line situations. See the first situation is I have a positive charge Q. I am going to draw lines. See, I have drawn four lines here. Now, the question is what is the logic of drawing four lines? The answer is it is purely a personal choice. Now, I have drawn four lines. You can draw eight lines, no problem or three lines, no problem. Suppose you are drawing two lines, that also is ok. This is my drawing. I imagine this to be your drawing. Okay. Yours, mine. Your drawing is two lines. No problem. See the situation is in the next step. If I draw electric field lines around 2q, I am supposed to draw eight lines here. And you are supposed to draw how many lines? four lines here that is the rule and the second is if instead of positive charge if I have negative charge here the direction of the lines will be reversed ok. Now, I am drawing the electric field lines around 2 q negative charge how to draw that the lines must be oppositely directed. Now, this is only q I have to draw So, I hope you understood and here it should be four lines directed towards if it is negatively charged. Is that clear to you? Now, you have to copy the electric field lines around a dipole from your textbook. Before going to our next topic, we need an idea about area vector. Have you heard area vector? We never took area as a vector, but hereafter we have to. See it is like this, just imagine you have a book, this is my Halliday Resnick physics and you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 areas here, ok, 6 areas. Just imagine I how to take this area as a vector, a vector will have both magnitude and direction, magnitude of this area vector you can calculate by measuring these dimensions. The direction of the area vector is fixed like this. The direction of the area vector is always pointing out like this. So, here it is like this. Here this is the direction of the area vector. Here this is the direction of the area vector. Here it is towards me. Here it is like this, like that. So, the direction of the area vector is always pointing outwards. Remember that. For understanding Faraday's visualization, of electric field, you imagine there is an electric field in this classroom. Okay. This electric field is visualized by Faraday like this. For that what you can do is, you imagine in this side wall of this classroom, we are hammering some 1 lakh nails equally spaced in lines. Okay. How many lines are there in material? Total number of lines uh, total number of nails hammered there is 1 lakh. Opposite to each nail here, I am hammering another nail there. So, that wall also will have a 1 lakh nails hammered. Okay. Now, what I do is, I tie a sewing thread, small thread here on a nail and tight it and tied it to the other end there. Okay. So, how many threads will be there in this classroom? You imagine. How many are there? 1 lakh. Agreed? So, this is a kind of visualization. They are all equally spaced and in the same direction. So, a kind of uniform electric field is existing here. And I imagine an area. This is an area I am imagining. 
I mean, I imagine this area here, okay. And now I calculate the electric flux through this area. Flux is equal to the electric flux. The electric flux through this area is, I am just counting 1, 2, 3, etc. And I got uh, some thousand, thousand lines. Electric flux is equal to thousand lines. Okay. The symbol for representing electric flux is phi E. So, phi E is equal to electric flux is equal to thousand lines. I hope that idea is clear to you. Just imagine as we are tying some 1 lakh threads in this class, we have the next class. In our neighboring class, what we do is we have some 50,000 threads there, an identical classroom. But how many nails are fixed there? How many threads are there? Only 50,000. Half of what we fixed in this class means the electric field intensity there is half of the intensity you have here. Okay. So, what I do is I imagined this area here and I counted the number of lines, I got 1000 here. How many I will get there? I will get only 500 there because there are the electric field intensity is only half. So, what I understand is electric flux is proportional to electric field intensity. I hope you got that idea. Okay. Now, I take another area. This area is only half of this. You see only half of this. So, I take this half area with me here and if that half area I am holding it here, tell me with this full area I had a thousand flux lines. With this half area, can you guess how many lines will be here? The number of lines in this classroom will be 500. So, as area decreases, electric flux also decreases. Correct, no? And if I hold this area in the other classroom, I will get only 250 lines. So, what I understand is electric flux is proportional to area. S is the symbol used in the NCRT book. So, we are following that. So, electric flux is proportional to electric field intensity, electric flux is proportional to the area. Now, there is a third factor on which this flux depends on. Think of this. I am holding this area in this classroom like this and I counted the number and I got 1000 lines. Now, just imagine, is there any way of holding this area? with the lesser number of lines passing through that? The answer is yes. If I twist this area like this, if I hold it this way, there is no electric field lines passing. And at this point, the maximum electric field lines are passing. We say flux is maximum at this position and flux is minimum at this position. So, how do you include that idea also here? It is for that we studied area vector concept. See this is that, this is the area vector. I hold it this way. See this is the area to make it a vector, this is the direction perpendicular outwards. So, at this point just imagine the electric field is in that direction. So, here the angle between area vector and electric field is 0. And if I twist it like this, here area vector is downwards, electric field is that way. So, this is the direction of electric field and this is the direction of area vector. The angle theta is 90. The angle is 90. Okay. There, the, in this case, there is no flux. So, in this case, when electric field 
and area vector are in the same direction when theta is 0 here flux is maximum here flux is 0 for including this idea what we will do is we will write mathematically write this electric flux is proportional to a trigonometric function which has maximum value at this position and minimum value at this position. So, that is like this maximum value at this position and minimum value at this position that is a trigonometric function which has maximum value when theta is 0 and minimum value when theta is 90. Which trigonometric function is that? Theta 0 that is cos theta that is cos 0 is 1 and sin cos 90 is 0. So, we say electric flux is proportional to cos theta and we write it further like this phi a is equal to E s cos theta because the proportionality constant is 1. So, this can also be written as E dot s. So, this is one important formula we were looking for. So, we studied electric flux. What is electric flux? Symbol, the number of electric field lines. And what are electric field lines? Imaginary lines you can draw in an electric field. And how many lines are to be drawn? It is a personal choice. In one electric field, if you are drawing 10 lines, in, the, in another electric field, the number of lines must be proportionately increased. This is the idea you have to study. And one more thing. You see electric flux is E dot S. E dot S, this is a vector, this is also a vector, this is a dot product. So, electric flux is actually a scalar. Scalar quantity, can you guess the unit of electric flux? Now, unit of earlier we have written lines here. So, that is concept wise. Here the magnitude when you are writing, you have to write Newton per coulomb into meter square. So, Newton meter square per coulomb is the unit of electric flux. Study this carefully. This is going to be the base of our next class. In that next class, we will be studying a theorem called Gauss theorem which is the most important topic of second year physics. So, prepare notes of this topic, study well and prepare for the next class. Thank you.